sold out to Jesus, praise yes. God. Um, what does it mean to be sold out to Jesus? Amen. I ask myself that question, praise God. And I, and I have a notes from the, from the teacher, amen, but I have my own notes too. It says, sold out to Jesus means a complete, complete surrender life to him. Everything we possess, everything about us belongs to him and should be available for his use. Yes. Psalms 37 and 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Are your desires that seek with the Lord? They should be proud of. We should not allow distractions to get in the way. Amen. Praise God. Because we always hear that. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of our heart. Your heart. Praise him. Praise the Lord. But you know, our desires, amen, things that we desire, they should be exactly what God desires for us. We shouldn't be wanting to desire something that's contrary to what God desires for us. Yeah. And that's why we have a conflict, and that's why we're not sold out. Amen. So what is hindering you from total and full obedience to Christ? Amen. My question to you, what's hindering you? Praise God. It says in Galatians 5 and 7, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Amen. Who and what is hindering you from being sold out to God? Now, our paper talked about the rich young ruler, Mark 10. Amen. He thought his riches were more important than God. And you remember he ran before Jesus and he ran to him, what oh, glory, you know. What is it that I need, to do, I need to do for you? And then Jesus said to him, do that one thing. Yes. Amen. Be like, well, he wanted him to sell his possessions. And it said he went away sad. Sad. So he couldn't sell off. Amen. Because his possessions, amen, he thought that what his riches were more important than what God could provide. Yes. Amen. And it's like, that's like us sometimes. Sometimes we feel that what we want or what we have is more than what God can give to us. And that's just not true. Amen. Matthew 6 and 19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust dug through and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and with these do not break through or sleep. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. What are we laying up for ourselves on this earth that we can't give up Amen. for Christ? Amen. So when you get sold out, praise God, after you surrender, trouble and trials 100% will come. Amen. But remember, in Romans 8, it says, For I persuade that he, I'm sorry, 838. For I persuade that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Trust the Lord with your life. Sell out to Him, and you will be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. John 3 and 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The word bat baptism, baptize, means to submerge or emerge. So when baptism discusses it, involves a person being totally submerged into something else. Baptism implies being all in and implies that a change has taken place. Baptized people are changed people. Yes. Water baptism was commanded by Jesus for all his followers. Matthew 28 and 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost as a sign of their union with and commitment to Christ being baptized by water. By water. Does not being baptized by water does not save us. Faith in the finished work of Christ saves us. Amen. Being immersed in water symbolizes the, the cleansing of our hearts and
and the washing away of our sins by the blood of Jesus. Believer, believers proclaim they have been born again by the grace of God. Baptism into the Holy Spirit was promised by John the Baptist, who said that Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His followers waited until Jesus promised to send them a comforter. And when it came, it poured out on them, and they were never the same again. They were bold in their witnessing, empowered them to perform miracles, going to endure persecutions. The church, church, the church had begun throughout the book of Acts. The baptism by the Holy Spirit was repeated by, as people came to know Jesus, both Jews and Gentiles, and served to unite the church. My topic tonight is be not deceived. I'm reading from the books of Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, and it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to eat, pleasant to eat, pleasant to eyes, I'm sorry, excuse me, and a tree to be of uh, desire to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And then I have um, the next scripture, um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. And it says, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Yes. And then I have chapter, um, I'm sorry, um, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, in my own words, I wrote down tonight with, well, a couple of days ago, and I asked some more with my husband. Um, I wrote about marriage, and marriage is honorable between a man and a woman, not to be perceived by the worldly lifestyle. And also, I wrote that um, living together, not being married, is a sin. And also, having more than one partner and indulge in sexual behavior with more than one partner. It's not of God. And also, I wrote for the scripture for that, um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 says, For the poor shall a man leave his father and mother, shall be joined unto his wife, that they, they too shall be one flesh. Okay. The reason why I picked this, um, this story, Be Not Deceived, because you know, before I joined the church, I got saved three years ago. I have went through a lot before my husband Curtis came back into my life, you know, and I look at a lot of the things back then that, you know, wasn't of God. Yes. And I'm very, very thankful today. I'm very thankful to have him in my life. Amen. I'm thankful to be here in the church. I learned so much in the church here in Citadel and through my husband. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Oh, never too late to receive Jesus Christ uh -huh. as your Savior and Lord and, um, you know, coming into the kingdom of God. Yes. Right? And so, but when I read um, my topic, it was going a whole different way. It was talking about putting things off. And you can say that, too. You can use that, apply that there. Is don't, don't put off your soul's salvation. Yes. You know, do, do it now. Because you want to give um, glory to God when you get to, to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and, and, and into your life. You want to give Him your all. You want to give Him your best as you go, grow to know Him. So don't, don't wait till late, the last minute. And even though God is merciful and kind and loving to forgive our sins and when we call on His name, He will. A lot of times we procrastinate. The spirit of procrastination comes in. And we make all kinds of excuses not to accomplish it. And I want to encourage us as believers tonight to, and it's never too late. That's the, that was the topic. That it's never too late. My main topic 
His ways, we ought to be like Jesus. Number one, we ought to be like Jesus in righteousness. First Corinthians 1 and 30. But of Him, or in Christ Jesus, for God has given to us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The believer must live in the atmosphere of love of Christ. Jesus goes on to state that this is done by the His commandments. It is through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ that the believer receives wisdom from God and experiences righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. As long as one is joined to Christ, he is the source of all his blessings. Number two, we are to be like Jesus in freedom from the world. John 1, chapter 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. God is a jealous God. The friendship of the world is spiritual adultery. I'm faithless to God, and I'll pledge to commit to him. God will not accept such friendship. Our great desire and prayer should be to live a life of holiness, to be accepted by God. This requires separating ourselves from the world and drawing every marriage to God. We must live for God, worship Him, obey Him, take His side against sin, stand for righteousness, resist the need of evil, perform works of kindness for others, imitate Christ, follow Him, serve Him, go after the Holy Spirit, we feel that it's in our bodies to God is dead to sin and as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And three, but to be like Jesus in the fruit of the Spirit. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The Christian, as he practices love toward everyone, and especially toward all true believers, instead of compromising the holiness of God, is essential that God that it's essential that love for God and His will, as you live in His word, control and direct the love for others. Love for God is always the first. Number four, work to be like Jesus and walk in the light. John 1, 1 7. But if you walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Be followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Don't follow me if I am following Jesus. Right. Lord, I, I tell you, that, that, that word just edified my soul. Yes. It made me feel good. Me. You know, sometimes you wonder, you know, they really give this stuff all through me. Yeah, but some of this kind of heavy. Um, but, but they got it. I can tell you, they got it. They got it. They got it, they got it in their own way. So I'm just kind of a little nose here. I'm saying, wait, 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 it's going off in this scripture, here, in that scripture, that's how you get that though. But you know what? If that's really what you're supposed to do. Go we'll take it and put it into your own, your own word and, and, and edify the strength of all the word of God.